Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 7 of .NET Basics. In this session, we'll understand how DLL hell problem is solved in .NET. Now, to understand this session properly, I strongly recommend watching parts 5 and 6, how .NET finds the assemblies during program execution and DLL hell. To quickly recap what we have seen in part 6, DLL health is a situation where we have two applications, A1 and A2, and both sharing an assembly, shade.dll. And let's say we have a new version of application A2, and when I install that new version of application A2, it also copies over the shade, a new version of the shade assembly. And that new version of the shade assembly is not backward compatible as a result of which application A1 fails. This is known as DLL hell. Let's quickly simulate this problem in code and then we will see how to solve this DLL hell problem by strongly naming the assemblies. Now if you look at this solution that I have right here, I have two console applications A1 and A2 and a class library project both of these console applications are making use of this class library project. So if you look at the class library project itself, I have a very simple class here which is called sample and within this class I have a static method called getMessage1 which returns a string. So all this method does is returns the string. And this class library assembly is being used by application A1 and A2 and you can see that in the references. So even in application A2, it's making use of that class library. So how are we using that class library assembly in A1 and A2? So within A1, what are we doing? We are actually invoking the sample class that is present in class library assembly and we are invoking this getMessage1 method and printing the message returned by this getMessage1. And we are doing the exactly same thing even in A2 application. Okay, so let's build a solution. Let's open A1 project in Windows Explorer, get into the bin, debug. And within this directory, as you might expect, we have the applications executable, a1.exe, and the assembly on which this application depends upon, which is class library.dll. So copy those assemblies and let's move them to my application folder. So I've created a folder called my application and I want to move both of these into this folder. So a1.exe and class library. And along the same lines, I want to also move application A2 and its dependent assembly, which is nothing but class library.dll again. So a2.exe and class library.dll. So both of these applications are depending on this class library.dll. So let's copy that into my application folder. Okay, so if you look at this, these two applications rely on this class library.dll. So if you look at the presentation, we exactly have the same situation. Two applications sharing this assembly. And if you look at this, both of these applications, now I run this application A1, it works fine, prints that message as expected. Similarly, application A2, it also works as expected. Why? Because both of these as, uh, executables have the version of the assembly they need. Now let's say, over a period of time, application A2 has gone some upgrades, as a result of which we have a new version of application A2. And as part part of the upgrade process they also changed you know the class library assembly maybe you know let's say this is a new version of class library assembly that we have so they changed the version number from 1.0 to 2.0 and within the assembly they also have changed the method name from get message 1 to get message 2 now from this is a breaking change if there is already an application that is expecting get message one method to be present within the sample class, those applications will now start failing when you copy over this assembly. Let's see that in action. Okay, so let's build this assembly and let's go into the console application A2 and let's make, okay, this one is going to make use of get message one. Remember, 
we are having a new version. So this is the new version of A2 and the class library. So when I build this project, and let's go into the bin directory of this application, copy the application and the class library into our My Application folder. Copy and replace that. Now look at this. We installed a new version of A2 application as a result of which it overwritten the class library .dll as well. And now when we run A2 it works fine. There's no issue. But the existing application which is A1, it fails it will not find get message 1 because why this class library dll contains get message 2 method right now get message 1 is removed and the change for this assembly is not backward compatible and it has been accidentally overwritten by the installation of this new application a2 as a result of which your existing application a1 stopped working so this is nothing but dll hell okay so now let's get rid of all of these and let's see how to solve this problem. Okay. So let's put it back to how it was before. So let's go to assembly info.cs of class library. So let's make it version 1 like how it was before. And let's call this method as usual get message 2, 1. And let's build this class library assembly change a2 to back what it was get message 1 okay now let's strongly name this shared assembly and how to do that very simple we use the strong naming tool first to generate the key pair the private and public key pair once we have that key file we then use the assembly key file attribute and then strongly name this assembly and if you're if, if you're not sure how to do that, we already have a video recorded on that, so please check that video because we'll be will not be covering you know the complete details of strongly naming an assembly here. All right, so I already have the key file which is generated using the strong name tool, and it is present in the C drive. That's the name of the key file. So let's copy that. Let's get into the assembly info.cs of our class library assembly. And within that, we use the assembly key file attribute. So assembly, assembly key file attribute. And to the constructor, we pass in the name of the key file that contains our private and public key pair. All right. So now let's rebuild the solution. So rebuild the solution. So what, what will this process do? It has strongly named this class library assembly. All right. So now let's remove these references which were already there. So I'm removing these references and let's clean the solution. Now you might be wondering what clean solution will do. Clean solution will basically delete all the assemblies that are there in the bin folders of respective projects. So if you get into the bin folder of any project, you shouldn't be finding any assembly. They would have been deleted. Now this is just the Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio host file, which we'll which we'll talk about in a later session. But you don't find the executable or the DLL. So if you go back to the class library, even that should have been deleted by now when we said clean project. So clean project basically deletes everything, the assemblies from the respective folders. Okay, so let's rebuild the solution. Obviously, we'll get errors because why application A1 and A2 are referring to this class library assemblies, but we don't have a reference to those assemblies yet. So let's set the references now. So application A1 wants to use the class library assembly, which is present in A1 folder. So class library bin debug class library. And along the same lines, we want, a, we want to set a reference to application A2 as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and rebuild the solution once again. So now everything should work without issues. Okay, now the only difference between the first time and this time is that this time this class library assembly is a strongly named assembly. All right, so now let's open this folder in Windows Explorer, get in the bin debug. So you have this a1.exe and the class library assembly. Let's copy these 
and move them into our my application folder so I paste them here and along the same lines let's open application A2 open it in Windows Explorer we are doing the exactly the same thing except that A1 and A2 I mean the class library assembly right now is strongly named copy and replace so now I run A1 it works fine as expected A2 works fine now let's do the breaking change but before we do the breaking change mind you guys this class library is a strongly named assembly so this can be installed into the GAC global assembly cache okay and again we have seen how to do that in the previous sessions so please watch those in detail if you're not sure on how to do that so I want to install this assembly into the GAC so let's go into the Visual Studio command prompt and we use the GAC utility tool for that so GAC util hyphen i for install copy the path which is c colon backslash my application and within that we have this class library dot dll and press enter so what should di this do they should install this class library assembly into the gag so since this I mean we have built this assembly using dotnet visual studio 2010 and we have dotnet framework 4.0 you know the location where this assembly is installed is actually C Windows Microsoft .NET assemblies remember if you have .NET Framework 4.0 installed on your computer you have two versions of the GAC and we have spoken about that again in our previous sessions okay so let's go to C colon backslash Windows Microsoft .NET assembly and within that if you go to GAC MSIL you should see a class library folder there within which we have this is built using version 4.0 of .NET and the version of the class library assembly is 1.0.0 and this is the public key token and if you open that folder you should see class library assembly very good okay now let's go ahead and do the breaking change that we want to do now let's say there is a new version of A2 and A2 has changed some of the things in this assembly let's say they changed they did the exact same thing they changed this method name from get message one to get message two and obviously they need to change the version number as well so assembly version right now is 2.0 and let's build this assembly and let's open this and obviously it is expecting get message two let's build this application A2 okay let's cop let's open this in Windows Explorer then debug copy the application and the DLL go into my application folder copy paste them so now as you might expect it, it did the same thing it overwrote a2.exe and class library.dll now this is a version 2 of class library and remember since this is strongly named you can install this as well into the gag now if I run a1.exe look at that a1.exe will still work look at that it's working and a2.exe will also work because why if you remember how dotnet runtime environment finds assemblies during program execution it's very simple it searches the version it requires and if it's a strongly named assembly it checks the gag and if it finds it there it pulls it from there and then uses it if it's not found from the find i mean if it doesn't find it in the gag and if there is a configuration file and if you have specified a specific location to search for in the configuration file it searches for that location if, n if there is no configuration file then it searches in the location where the executable is present and if the assembly is found there it uses that so please check that video part and you'll understand that in a great detail okay now since we installed version 1 of this assembly inside the GAC so this a1.exe will find that assembly it requires in the GAC and uses it but a2.exe will not find 
what it requires in GAC because it is present only here. If you want, you can install this also into the GAC. Okay, so once we install this assembly into the GAC, what's going to happen? Both the versions can live side by side. Let's actually do that. So if I say GAC util install this assembly also into the GAC, what's going to happen? Even this version 2 of this class library assembly gets installed. So if we go back and check the C colon Windows Microsoft.net and assembly folder GAC MSIL you should see within class library two assemblies one is version 1.0 the other one is 2.0 and even if you delete this assembly from here your application let's close this both application A1 and A2 should still work so A1 is working a2 is also working. So how are they working? Because both of these applications, what, what is the resolution algorithm used by the runtime environment? It first searches the GAC if it's a strongly named assembly that it is looking for. And within the GAC, you have both the assemblies, class library version 1.0 and version 2.0. So strongly naming the assemblies solves this DLL hell problem. There is no accidentally, you know, there's no chance of accidentally overwriting the assemblies because why different version of the assemblies can live together side by side. And this is called a side by side execution in fact. Okay, so strongly naming assemblies solves DLL hell problem. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.